in this chapter first i'll let you know what all the theory part they last theory thing what he is going to ask you prepare the theory i will just explain what all the theory required for solving the problem first i'll explain i'll list out what all the theory available and theory ask he will ask in the exam except this he is not going to ask any even a single concept other than this see now the first and foremost thing is he will ask first what do you, first you should understand what do you mean by natural convection and what do you mean by forced convection okay i'll explain i'll explain everything what i written here but not in detail means i'll not give you the dict uh, i'll not dictate the notes and all i'll not ask you to uh, uh, write on the notes now you can copy the notes later but whatever it is essential i'll ask you to write so here first we'll know let you know what is natural convection what is forced convection once you know those two there is a concept called boundary layer i'll explain what you mean by the boundary layer under the boundary layer we'll come across velocity boundary layer thermal boundary layer hydrodynamic boundary layer and boundary layer for plates boundary layer for hollow cylinder boundary layer for sphere like that different boundary layers will get for different shapes and the different non dimensional numbers that will significance of non dimensional numbers reynolds number prandtl and nusselt straighten number grassoff and pectel number so these are all the six non dimensional number definitely he will ask in exam either he will ask you to write down the figure of velocity and thermal boundary layer these two he will ask one question draw the figure of velocity boundary layer and thermal boundary layer for a flat plate one question or he can also ask write down the significance of any three or any five non dimensional numbers so he out of any five means he will ask only this out of this six he can ask any one so you prepare for this six definitely it will be easy for you to write down the answer so this is a theory question he can ask in the forced convection as well as in the natural convection see if we ask these two question in forced convection then this will be asked in forced, uh, natural convection if you ask these two question in natural convection this will be asked in the forced convection okay so definitely i tell the question will come the theory part of natural convection chapter will come within this only either it may be forced or natural under the convection module he will ask the theory of this things so significance is very very simple you can easily score good marks in writing the significance okay no need to remember the six formula if you remember the six formula is well and good or i will show you where it is available i will explain how to write down the significance and you can proceed further i think i remembered i have uh, i given some significance of non dimensional numbers in thermal motion subject also same i given significance for reynolds number prandtl number these two i given in thermal motion similar way you have to write down the significance for other numbers clear or the significance already done in fluid mechanics also you can refer that notes no issue significance remains same for all fluid mechanics thermal motion or hmt but the term will goes on very in thermo in fluid mechanics he is going to derive means significance of reynolds number only we we did in thermal motion we went further more reynolds number and nusselt prandtl number now we'll go with reynolds prandtl nusselt and these three numbers is clear so with this introduction i will start with the class now so this module is very very easy to score because theory is there is no much derivation all this will be having some formulas not derivation with the figure and formula and then this one formulas are the directly available in data and book how to represent in the form of significance the chart okay says <clears throat> so yes, first i'll go with natural convection or forced convection what do you mean by the convection can you tell the heat transfer takes place between convection means there must be a fluid interaction the fluid may be of if you want to tell it is a convection there should be a fluid interaction so the fluid may be two types one is air or gas and other is water or any liquid so that we consider as a fluid there must be a interaction between the fluid and the solid surface or there must be interaction between the fluid and fluid then we are going to call it as the convection heat transfer means there should be interaction between these two either interaction between fluid and solid and fluid and fluid then we are going to call that 
if the heat transfer takes place between those two, then we are going to call it as Q by convection. Okay, that's one that is called as Q. That we already done in the first chapter only. What do you mean by convection? What do you mean by the forced natural law? Still I'll repeat this. So first, in this chapter, what we are going to study is the interaction of the fluid and the solid. I'll remove this because this is nowhere concerned in this chapter. I'll remove this. We are going to interact between the fluid and solid and we are going to find out the value of Q. Clear? Fluid and solid. The fluid may be sometime the problem in gas, in gas, air, water or some other liquid. This four we can select as a liquid and solid may be some surfaces. This surface depends upon the configuration. Either it will be flat, cylindrical, circular or spherical like that. Depending upon the configuration, this solid depends. So whenever the fluid is interacting or flowing over the surface, what is the Q? He will ask this one. That's all. That's all he will ask in this entire module. Okay. Then, <clears throat> coming to the natural and forced conduction, as you all know, for example, you assume one plate. You assume there is a horizontal plate. If I keep this horizontal, this horizontal plate is hot in temperature. This temperature of the plate is very, very hot. So I take this as temperature of W. Temperature of W is TW is the temperature of wall. You should remember the notations. Temperature of wall is called TW. Sometimes we'll also call it as temperature of surface. So in that case, the notation is TS. These two are same. There is no difference between these two, depending upon the problem. He will ask us wall temperature or surface temperature. That means here the top surface is having a surface. Entire the surface of this plate will be having TW or T, both the same. Then the fluid which is flowing here and this uh, plate, for example, I take the first example as plate and uh, the interaction of the heat between the hot surface that is solid and the gas or atmospheric air. If the air is allowed to blow naturally, there is no external force acting, the air is flowing over the plates below and bottom, uh, above and the bottom. Then the temperature of this air is called as T air or it is also called as T infinity. We are going to call it as T surrounding. Clear? Notations you remember properly. What do you mean by T air, T infinity, T surrounding? That means it is nothing but a, the fluid which is flowing above and below the plate. It is called T infinity. And the surface temperature of this plate is Tw or T wall. These two we are going to note the note. So what is the, with this example, I can tell you what is forced on natural convection. See, if the air is blowing without velocity, of course, velocity must be there, and only air means air can blow, and density difference must be there. If the velocity which is created is naturally because of just temperature difference, then we are going to call it as natural convection. Means the velocity of the air is very, very slow. Hence, the air is blowing over the surfaces, it is take the heat, and the heat transfer takes place between the plate as well as the air. That is called natural convection. For same example, if I ask you to draw the forced convection, then what do I do? Just fix up a fan here. If you fix up a fan, then what will happen? Try to rotate this fan. That fan, because of this fan, the air will try to induce and force, forcefully pass over the plane. Then the rate of heat transfer will be something else. So the first chapter is everything is decided, everything is based on keeping a fan, blowing air over the surfaces, trying to solve the problem. The second uh, chapter in this module is removing this plan and if the air is blowing over the surfaces, the arrangement is same, notations are same. If the air is blowing over the surfaces, how to find out the Q? That's all the difference. So generally what is the formula for Q for convection we know? Q for convection is equal to H A delta T. Delta T is equal to T surface minus T infinity. Sometimes we will write it as T wall minus T infinity, both are same. So here, any one out of this he will ask. That's all. Any one out of this he is going to ask. So what he is going to ask? He, is going, he may ask you to find out the Q by giving all these three values. He may ask you to find out the Q by giving area, temperature of surface and temperature of infinity. But H will not be given. H will not be given. So to find out the H, under the natural convection there is some procedure. To find out the H, under the forced convection there is some procedure. We will follow that procedure. Put that value of H here, we find out the Q. In all the chapter, in both the chapter forced and natural, there is some procedure to find out H. Here, to find out H, we have to include that is, for example, forced convection. 
if it is convection natural convection or i'll call it as free convection if it is forced and free convection there is some procedure what are the procedure here we have to introduce three non dimensional numbers here out of six i do remember what are the non dimensional numbers are written there some non dimensional numbers are written so among that i will pick something to put here that means if you ask you to find out the q for forced convection by providing the area ts and t infinity you have to first find out h so i can understand whether it is a forced or natural convection if it is forced to find out h we have to find out the nusselt number first nusselt number so the formula for nusselt number is i'll show you where it is available nusselt number and to this we have to find out reynolds number and prandtl number so these two numbers first we have to find out and these two numbers we have to substitute in the formula of nusselt number we will get a, we will get the value of h that value is substituted here in get q so here you should, somewhat in, important thing is to find out these values to find out reynolds number prandtl number nusselt number then finding h substitute in that h here and finding the q that's all in the first chapter what we did we just straight away found out q because h was given in the question a was given temperature of surfaces was given temperature of fluid was given everything was given just you used to ask only q that was very simple if h is not given first you should segregate whether it is a forced or natural once it is once you know it is a forced you should find out reynolds number prandtl number nusselt number then go for h then substitute that h here get the value of q if it is a free convection here also first you should find out nusselt number to find this nusselt number what are all the terms you should include is we should include prandtl number and grashof number not reynolds grashof number gr substitute these two in the formula of nusselt number you get the value of h substitute this h here you will get a q understood so this is the procedure to solve the problem for natural and forced convection that's all here you have to do the exercise only to find out h to find h first we should find nu to find nu first we should know reynolds number and prandtl number substitute and get the values but for different configurations the formula for nu is different re is different prandtl number is different that is the challenge you should know which is the configuration given for example if the air is blowing over the plate the formula for these three will be something if instead of plate if i keep a cylinder here if i keep a cylinder if i keep a cylinder procedure is same but the formula for these three will be different you should know which is the configuration given what formula is supposed to do and where i should to substitute that's all in this problem in this uh, chapter okay so this is the thing how we are going to solve the problem in forced and natural convection clear i'll drop this so next topic i'll explain is the thermal boundary velocity and thermal boundary layer so this is somewhat uh, important you check out this because many times they ask this question you take a plate let us take a plate having some length l this plate i'll take it as l length l and here x is equal to 0 and here x is equal to l that is the distance of the plate what i'm taking so now if i allow the air to blow over the surface if i allow the air to blow over the surface of velocity some velocity will take so what will happen for this if the air is blowing over the surfaces at some velocity then we can observe the layer which is nearer to the surface and this okay the layer which is nearer to the surface will be having the velocity of the air which is nearer to the surface will be zero and this edge is called as leading edge and this is called trailing edge trailing edge is at the end and leading edge is at the beginning so how the profile will form the profile will form like this that means so this theory if you read you can understand but still whatever is is, is essential for the problem and so i'm explaining you so that means if the air is flowing over the plate surface then what will happen here we are going to create an imaginary surface this imaginary layer will be formed where below this the effect of the temperature will be the effect of this wall will be having here above this the velocity whatever the velocity is here here also it will be same velocity here also it will be same velocity but if we go below this layer then the definitely the velocity will here and here it will be different can i tell why it will be different i given one example yesterday correct if the air is blowing on the surface 
and if the surface is somewhat rough then what will happen the air which is nearer to the surface which is nearer to the plate surface will be having zero velocity correct and next to that layer will be having somewhat smaller velocity compared to this velocity again next layer because of the shear force the velocity goes on increases up to certain level after that there is no change in the velocity which is given and which is there here this region so where the velocity is going to vary until what region the velocity is going to vary if you draw the profile that profile indicates the boundary layer this is the boundary layer for the velocity after this this velocity will be here see for example i take this as 20 meters per second so here also velocity will be 20 meters per second only that means even though the plate is there there is no effect of this plate on this air motion after this so below this layer below this layer wherever you measure at the immediate layer the surface will be zero one two three four five six like that the velocity goes on increases till what till this layer after this layer there is no effect of the plate that means the velocity remains same as the inlet velocity initial velocity so if I, how, how will get this profile this profile i will not get first what i will get how i will get so i'll, I'll this profile it will be i'll draw a separate figure and let's explain that so first there is a plate if the if the air is going at a velocity of something here then can you tell what will be the velocity here v will be zero correct if i move further v will increase some reference i'll take here the velocity will be zero if i move little bit higher level the velocity will be more if i move higher level the velocity will be more little bit more little bit more like that it will goes on increases the profile of velocity will goes on increases till what up to certain level it increase later on the velocity will retain same it will remain same that means this profile will become straightened will you agree till some location the velocity will be parabolic nature later on it will become vertical line so where where you will get a vertical line if you separate this below this there is an effect of this plate above that there is no effect on the air because of this plate that is called as this layer is called boundary layer this layer is called as the boundary layer yes perfect yeah hello yes sir okay that layer is called boundary layer and this profile of velocity if i draw Whenever x is equal to zero, something it will be. If I go something x value, that profile will be something. If I go something again, you'll get a something profile. Like that, if I extend the x surface, the distance of x, this profile will be different at each locations. Correct? So that so at this location, this profile may be here. If I check out here and if I check out the velocity, this may go up to here. That means if I draw a profile, velocity curve may go up to here. Later on it will become straight. That means at this location. This is the boundary. At this location, this is the boundary. Like that. If I go on joining all the boundaries, we got this profile. This profile is nothing but a velocity profile. So if I go inside this layer somewhere at this location, if I ask you to draw the velocity profile, what you will do? This is called thermal boundary. This is called velocity boundary layer. And if you ask velocity profile at the location of x is equal to something, for example, if x is equal to half meter, you find out that you draw the profile of the end material. You First, you draw one vertical line, draw the curve in a parabolic nature, then it will become vertical again. This will be vertical. That means the velocity here, this indicates the velocity. See the velocity here, here it is zero, goes on, increases till certain point. Later on, the velocity remains same. So, this is the profile for velocity at this location. Like that, similarly, if I proceed, I'll get different locations. Different locations, I'll get different velocity profile. And if I join all the profiles, I'll get this boundary layer understood so if i go here then what will happen take this as a constant this will be zero goes on velocity goes on increases till here later on if you check out this velocity will be constant the value of velocity will be constant till here it will be varied see the arrow marks there but here it will be same that means at this location if i check out the velocity will be varying up to here later on it is not going to vary so this red color what I have drawn, it is a velocity profile, or it is also called as it is called as thermal, it is it is called as boundary layer. And this black color what I have drawn, it is called velocity profile, and blue color is a plate. So this is plate. Air is blowing. So because of the air blowing, the blowing of the air, 
If I measure the velocity at this location, I'll get some profile. If I measure the velocity at this location, I'll get some profile. So this profile, this is the profile we are getting. That is called velocity profile. So because of this velocity profile at different location, if I find out the point where the velocity is going to constant, where the velocity is going to become constant, and, and if I join those tip, then I'll get this red color curve. This curve is called as boundary layer. Understood? What do you mean by boundary layer? What do you mean by velocity profile? And what do you mean by the plate? Clear. Still, if I go in the this boundary layer may be divided into three parts. Oh, what are the three points it can be divided? See, till here it is called as laminar region. Between this, it is called as turbulent uh, transition region. Further, this it is called turbulent region. So here to here it is laminar region. Here to here it is transition. And here to here it is turbulent. Turbulent region. Either figure which we go. He will ask to draw the velocity profile. So definitely you should draw this figure. Trailing edge, leading edge, trailing edge, x is equal to 0, x is equal to L, length of the plate. If the velocity of the uh, velocity here is going at some velocity, then what will happen? At different locations, we will get different profiles. So up to certain level, the profile will be parabolic, later on it becomes straight. You would go on pointing the location where the profile will get velocity profile gets vertical line. So if I join, then you'll get a boundary layer. That boundary layer is divided divided into three parts. One is laminar boundary layer, transition, and turbulent region. So this is the figure for velocity boundary layer. Any doubts? If anybody have any doubts, please ask him. No, sir. Okay. Take the figure. That is there in the notes. I'll share you the notes, but just take the figure. Okay. So for still, still better understanding, I'll give this point, the height from the plate to this point as delta x. The height from that point as delta x. That means if this delta x will be different as based on the x, that if I move from the plate from 0 position to the x, L, x is equal to L, the value of delta x will be different. Just if I place, go on placing a point at delta x, I'll get this profile. That profile is called boundary layer profile. <clears throat> okay. So the next heading is next heading is thermal boundary layer. Now we got velocity boundary layer. Means the boundary layer which is created is due to the velocity. This is called velocity boundary layer. The next heading is thermal boundary layer. Thermal boundary layer. I'll draw this. Thermal boundary layer. So here also I'll draw one plate. So till now we discussed only about the velocity. Now we'll discuss about the thermal temperature. That's all. So this is as usual, this is L. The entire length of the plate is called L. Here x is equal to 0 x is equal to L. Okay. This is called leading edge and this is called trailing edge. These two words are very, very important because in some problem, he will ask to find out what is delta x at leading edge, what is delta x at trailing edge. You should know what is leading edge and trailing edge. So as you know, the delta x is different now. Based on the x distance, the thickness of the velocity layer was different. So you should find out what is delta x also in some cases. So here, so what will happen for if the velocity, the air is going at a velocity V and this is having the T surface or it is also called T wall. If the plate is having some temperature, higher temperature and this velocity which is going, the air which is going at certain velocity and this also having some, some temperature which is lesser than the plate. Then can you draw the profile of temperature, how it will be? 
at this location. At this location, if I ask you to draw the profile, check out here. So this is the reference for you. Temperature at the bond. If I check out the air, if the air is blowing and the air temperature is just 25 and this is 80 degrees centigrade, at this location, at this, see, I'll take this distance as y, uh, the direction of this is y and direction this is x. At a distance of x, something and y is 0, what will be the temperature of the air? Can it tell? Whether it will be 0 or maximum? Maximum. Maximum. So this is the profile. This is the look. At this location, temperature is maximum. If I move further y, means if I ask you to find out at the same location of x, y is equal to 1 millimeter above the plane, then the temperature will be temperature of the air will be less. Still, if I move, the temperature of the air will be less. Still, it will be less. It will be less. That means if I join all these points, I will get a curve. How the curve will be? The curve will be like this, correct? Here it will be maximum. It will be goes on reducing till what? Till certain level where this curve will become straight. That means there is no further drop in the temperature. Correct? So you mark this point. So for at a distance of x, we got this as a point. Again, if I increase the value of x here, if I ask you to draw the profile, the point will increase like this. And if I join all these curves, I'll get a temperature boundary layer. That's all. Like that, if I ask you to find out here, so this layer will get. This layer is called temperature boundary layer. And this is called well, temperature profile. Temperature profile. And this is called temperature boundary layer. Understood? Understood the value of how to find out, how to draw this figure first. See, because many times they have asked this figure, draw the temperature boundary layer and velocity boundary layer. And draw the temperature profile and velocity profile. So you should know how to draw this figure. So here also he will ask to find out what is this height? We are going to denote this as delta x. What is the height of delta x? He will give the value of x. x at x is equal to 0.5 meter. Find out what is delta x. First, you should know what is delta x, correct? That delta x is nothing but the point where below this delta x, the temperature profile varies. After this delta x, there is no temperature profile variation. Okay? That means that is. Below this x, that is a we are still in the layer, thermal boundary layer. After that, we are exceeding the thermal boundary layer. That is the meaning of that delta x. He is going to ask what is that delta x? At a distance of x is equal to 0.5, x is equal to 0.1, x is equal to L, x is equal to 0, you find out x. Delta x he will ask. Other than the q, he can also ask what is delta x. Remember what you mean with the delta x. Sir. Okay, I'll finish this. So these are all the theory part required to, so he will ask you to draw the temperature and velocity boundary layer for a plane. So if you, you should know those things. Then, all of you please open the data handbook. All of you open the data handbook. Just I'll project the data handbook which I have, some, which I have shared in the Google Classroom. I'll project now. If you're having your own data handbook, you open no issue. If not, you open the data handbook, which I have shared in the Google Classroom. Can you see all of you can see the data handbook? Okay. Now we are going for the con convection chapter, no? So open the convection chapter in your data handbook, whatever may be the series, just you go for the convection, page number 112. For this, under this data handbook, it is page number 112. I'll do directly there. These are all done. Then page number 112. Okay. Here, before 112, you go for the page number 111 in the data handbook, which I have shared to you. If you are having your own data handbook, just you open the page number of convection. Before the convection chapter, there is one sheet. 
called dimensionless groups. There is one sheet called dimensionless groups. Everybody can see the data handbook, no? Which I have projected, which I presented. Can you see? Which I shared? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can okay. see. It. See here. Here there are so many non-dimensional numbers. What are all the six non-dimensional numbers I written there? Biot number. Oh, sorry. Uh, Reynolds number here. Reynolds number is this. You, you'll get a formula from here. From this sheet, you'll get a formula. Prandtl number is here. From this, you'll get a formula of Prandtl number. And Nusselt number is here. You'll get a formula of Nusselt number from this sheet. Then, which is one more? Grashof number here. Grashof number. We'll get a formula for Grashof number here. Like that. All the numbers, all the nine non-dimensional numbers, we, you are going to get the formula from this sheet. So what he is going to ask is just asking a significance. The significance also written in the next column. See here. First for first is groups, symbol, name, and significance. Everything is given. Just you should represent this in the form of the sentence. What is the significance? For example, one thing I tell you. What is the significance of Grashof number? The first point is the Grashof number is denoted by GR and it is a non-dimensional number. Anything, you take any non-dimensional number, this should be the first point. The so-and-so number is denoted by so-and-so thing and it is not having any units, any units. And it is, come for the significance now, it is a product of the ratio of buoyant force to the viscous force and inertia force by viscous force. It is a product of these two forces, these two ratios. You write those two force ratios. Then at the bottom, you write down this, this formula. So after simplifying this, Entire buoyant force, viscous force, inertia force, and viscous force. We will get the formula of Grashof number is equal to G beta delta T L cube rho square divided by mu square, where mu is equal to viscosity, L is equal to rho, sorry, density is equal to rho, L is equal to length of the plate in the meter or length of the body in meter, temperature of the body in the degree centigrade, beta is nothing but thermal shear force, G is nothing but acceleration due to gravity in meters per second, like that. That is the way of expressing the significance. Is it clear? He will ask any five significance or three significance to write down in the theory part. You should write, you should make use of this sheet and write down, you can write any significance. In the notes, I have given how to write down the significance. Same thing, I use the same formula, same formula, whatever I told now, I will use the same thing just to check out how to write down the significance. Prepare the notes of all the significance by yourself. And uh, uh, for the test and exam, you reproduce the same thing. Okay, because everything is given here. If, if you write this, at least you'll get few marks. If you put that in a for a proper sentence form, you will get full marks. Okay, now clear. Hello. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. Okay. Because see, instead of doing all this theory and wasting time, I don't want to waste the time. I wanted to. I am interested in solving the problems. So that all these are available in the data handbook. You can do that. Okay. So with this, I will go with the forced convection. These are all the introduction for either natural convection or forced convection. We cannot differentiate because he can ask to draw the profile in both the chapters. He can ask to draw the significance in both the chapters. So I cannot differentiate which chapter he is going to ask in the bottom line. So in this module, I'll complete both forced and natural convection because he can club in this chapter. In this module, he can club forced and natural convection. Problem he won't club, but he will club the theory part. So this is the theory part for force and natural convection. Now I'll go for the problem on forced convection. First we'll concentrate completely on forced convection. Then we'll go for concentration on uh, natural convection. So take them. Forced convection, forced convection, forced convection. The first model, the first topic is the forced convection, and under that, under that, you take the problem. First problem, I'll you take down. Application of first problem is application of non-dimensional application of non-dimensional analysis, non-dimensional analysis. So that is a heading. Application of first, you should know. Before going for the problem, solving the problem, first we should know how we are going to solve the problems based on non-dimensional numbers that we already done in turbo machines and fluid mechanics also done. So anyhow, I'll cover this one problem. Later on, you can cover any problem if it gives, you can cover. 
So first, take the problem. Consider a fluid with a velocity v. Consider a fluid with a velocity v. Flows across the heated flows across the heated plate. Flows over the uh, flows over the heated plate of length L of length L. Full stop. The heat transfer coefficient for this case, the heat transfer coefficient for this case is H. That is the convective heat transfer coefficient is H. And the viscosity of the fluid is determined by is given by mu. Viscosity of the fluid is given by mu. And the specific heat of the fluid is given by Cp. Thermal conductivity is given by K and the density of the fluid is given by Rho. So these are all the variables he has given. What is the uh, process? The process is very simple. There is a plate and air is flowing here. Air is flowing. This velocity of the air is V and the properties of this well, air is V, H, Cp, K and Rho and Mu. These are all the properties of the air. And what I am going to take from the plate, that is only length of the plate and uh, okay, length of the plate I am taking from this uh, arrangement. This is the arrangement and these are all the variables. So first we have to find out here the pi terms. We have to find out the pi terms. At the last you add up. Find out the pi terms. Find out the pi terms. Find out the pi terms. So how to write the equation? How to represent this equation? The value of h is equal to is equal to a function of rho mu d k c p and v. So just I represented all the variables in this form in the formula form. So or it can also be written as like this: f is equal to I'll include h also inside h comma rho comma mu comma d comma k comma c p comma v. That is equal to zero. Okay, so function of h, rho, v, mu, everything is equal to zero. So can you tell? Can you tell how many variables are there? The first step in the problem: number of variables. I'll denote it as n. How many variables are there here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven variables. Second, number of repeating variables. That is denoted by m. How many repeating variables will be there usually? How many repeating variables? We will take three. That is, first repeating variable should be having m, t. That, that's all we don't know. If you don't know, I'll explain in detail. If you know, repeating variables we will take. The, the repeating variable we will take it as. Um, We will take us. Okay. See, we know the repeating with I, I just elaborate this because instead of three, we will take four here. Why we are taking four? I'll elaborate that and I'll explain only one pi term. You have to do the remaining pi two, pi three, pi four, whatever pi terms you're taking. So after this, what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to write down the formulas. So what is the formula for H? Can you tell us H is equal to Y square beta square Kelvin? Express that in MLT form. Rho kg per meter cube. Express this in MLT form. Mu d. Sorry, this is not d. This is l. Length of the plate. No, l. Here also l. And k cp v. Everything you please express in the MLT form first, so that I'll explain how to take the repeating variables. This is l. Thermal conductivity watts per meter Kelvin Cp specific heat. What is the formula for specific heat? Uh, kilo joules per kg Kelvin. Velocity is meters per second. And mu mu is what is the formula for mu? Rho into kinematic viscosity is equal to kg per meter cube into meter per second square. So if I simplify, it will become kg per 
meter second square. So express everything in the form of MLT first. So why I am doing this? Because you know till now only three variable, three uh, how to take MLT form, M L T. I'll introduce one more that is delta now, that is theta. Check out here. So what is the value of H in form of MLT? I'll write the formula. The H is equal to M L to the power of minus 3 theta to the power of minus 1. That means Kelvin. Kelvin is nothing but temperature. We are introducing the temperature also. So because of that, I'm expanding this. And uh, rho, rho is expressed as M into L to the power of minus 3. And viscosity is expressed as M L to the power of minus 1 T to the power of minus 1. Here L is equal to Again, this is L. This one K. M L. Mu is uh, meter square, no, sir, in denominator. Theta to the power of minus 1. Mu again? Mu, denominator, it is meter square, no, sir. Mu, you know, the simplification. What is the unit of mu? Because meter cube and meter, no, sir. So it will become meter square, denominator. Is it correct a formula? What is the formula for kinematic viscosity? The kinetic viscosity will be meter square per second, sir, not meter per second. Sir. Sorry, meter square per second. Meter square per second. Then the retained is kg per correct. No? And then CP L square t to the power of minus 2, theta to the power of minus 1, and velocity V meters per second. So you first list down this in the form of MLT. Bigger. So I'll explain only one pi term, remaining pi terms you try to do. Okay. First you list down here. So how to find out the repeating variable? The first repeating variable should be having only the term of L. Where is the L? Here they are having L. So let us take this as a first repeating variable. This is a first repeating variable. And the separate second repeating variable should be having what? Second should be having only value of T. There is a, is there any, any unit which is having only T? No, there is no T values. So you can go with L and T. Is there any L and T? Like that you can go with L, M and T. So that I'll take the second repeating variable as rho. And then the third repeating variable, like that you try to take the repeating variables. I'll explain only this uh, third repeating variable. This is important for me, which is a third repeating variable. Okay. mu and this k. k is the fourth repeating variable for me. You know how to take the first, second and third repeating variable. The fourth repeating variable, I am concentrating on the value of theta. Remember, I am concentrating the value on the theta value. Wherever the theta is there, we have to include that also in this because it is a heat transfer where the temperature is going to interact. So theta we have to include and try to solve the problem with the considering the fourth repeating variable. So how many repeating variables now? That is m is equal to 4. So how many pi terms? Pi terms will be equal to 7 minus, that is n minus m. That is equal to 7 minus 3. 3 pi terms will get. So I'll go explaining only one pi term. Remaining two pi terms you please try to solve and come back to the next class. Okay? I'll accelerate this. Bigger the time up, no? Fast. Shall I rub this? Okay. I'll rub here and I'll explain the first pi term. So I'll write on the first pi term. You please observe here. Pi 1 is equal to, uh, first you write on the repeating variables and then you go with the other left out variables. So the repeating, I'll take L to the power of A1. Then rho to the power of b1, mu to the power of c1, k to the power of d1, and which is left out. After repeating variable, only one is left out, that is h. So this is the first pi term. Second pi term, this will be remain same. Instead of h, we'll use cp. Third repeating variable will be same. Instead of h, we'll use p. And there are these are all three repeating variables. So how to solve, how to solve for this? m to the power of 0. L to the power of 0, T to the power of 0 for pi 1, that is equal to L. What is the unit for L? L, the unit is L only, L to the power of A1. And what is the unit for rho? 
Unit 4 is m l to the power of minus 3 whole to the power of b1. Similarly, mu m l to the power of minus 1, t to the power of minus 1, whole to the power of c1, k m l t to the power of minus 3, theta to the power of minus 1, d1. And what is the value of h? m l minus 3, theta minus 1. Equating the power of m and t on both the sides. Equating power of MLT on LHS and RHS. If we equate both on MLT, power of MLT, what will have? What will have there? What will be having for M? So left hand side, what is the power for M? Zero. Right hand side, zero is equal to B1 plus C1. D1 plus 1. So this is this is the equation we got. Correct. For L, you write on the equation. Left hand side is 0. A1 minus 3 B1 minus C1 plus 1 minus 3. And for MLT 0 minus C1 theta to the power of k that also right here. C1 minus 3 D1 okay for theta. This side it is 0, other side where is theta? Theta is equal to minus D1 minus 1. So you by using these equations, you find out A, B, C, D values. You find out A, B, C, and D values. Once you get all the A, B, C, D values, substitute back here and simplify the equation. So I'll write the values of A, B, C, D directly. You simplify, you'll get the values. So value of A, B, C, D, right? A is equal to 1, and B is equal to 0, C is equal to 0 d is equal to minus 1. So like that we got. So substitute all this here. So that pi 1 will be, what is the pi 1 value? Pi 1 will be equal to, these are all a1. Pi 1 will be equal to l to the power of 1, rho to the power of 0, mu to the power of 0, k to the power of minus 1 into h. So if I simplify that, pi 1 is equal to, what is the value of pi 1? Pi 1 is equal to H L by K. So this is Pi 1. H L by K. So directly I taken the values of that. I simplified and written the values. Just I substituted these two values, those values in the equation of this Pi 1. And I got the Pi 1 values. Pi 1 is equal to L to the power of A1 is 0, A1 is 1, B1 is 0, C1 is 0, D1 is minus 1. So I return this as it is then. Simplify this. I'll cancel of these two. K, I'll take it, but, uh, I'll take it below and then H in DL by K. That is pi 1. Okay. Clear? So like that, you please try to complete pi 2 and pi 3. So anyhow, we got three pi terms. You complete pi 1, pi 1 is done. Pi 2, pi 3, please complete. If you're having doubts, you please ask me in the watcher. So this is a basic problem. You should know non-dimensional numbers, how to solve and how to get the pi terms. So it's already covered. So I went a little bit fast. Only thing you hear, we are not covered earlier is the theta. Earlier, you know, MLT include the theta also. Theta is nothing but temperature. MLT and temperature. Four repeating variables will take. Okay, all of you please type your reverse number. You can leave the class, you can attend the next class fast. If you have any doubt, you can ask.
Yes, all of you type the reverse number. You can leave the class. Attend for the next class.